Every organisation, the first thing uh, they should do is define what scope they want to include in their environmental management system. The scope is the areas within their organisation, their activities, their products or services that they want to include in their environmental management system. It outlines the boundaries, the um, conditions by which the management system is going to be developed and operated. If you want to actually implement ISO 14001 within your organisation, well, the best place to start is to look at what resources or what people that you have available inside and what expertise they have, especially within, in terms of environmental matters or with management systems in general. Um, you might have a quality system already. Those people might have a certain quality system expertise at that initially, or other people might have a specific environmental expertise. Those people could be used internally. If you don't have those type of people internally in your organisation, you could go on and actually hire an, an external consultant who will actually help you identify your main environmental risks or your environmental aspects and actually help you define those out in your management system and then help you build your management system appropriately and most importantly of all how to de define the processes to control those risks or environmental aspects. The environmental policy is a key document within the environmental management system. It really is a document that is defined by top management but implemented throughout the organisation. Um, the policy should include a number of key statements that have uh, been developed by management which include commitment to continual improvement, a commitment to compliance with legislation. The policy should be communicated throughout the organisation and to anybody that uh, requests a copy of the policy. Well, gap analysis of the requirements of 14001, I found in organisations that wouldn't have a specific strong environmental expertise or a qual or a or management system expertise, especially in with regard to 14001 in its organisation. For those people that are actually implementing a management system on their own, for a first time, a gap analysis is usually extremely beneficial. In those cases, where a gap analysis will do, it will bring, the auditor will come in and go through the management system as they have it at that point in time, and they will literally identify every gap in terms of the requirements of the standard. It will also identify what, what areas and give advice in terms of what areas the company can improve and make their management system more beneficial to themselves. Mm -hmm.